Hey guys, welcome to Food and Gladness. Today, I wanted to talk to you about basic seasonings that you would use in um, baking. Yeah. <laughs> like desserts and um, I call them sweet seasonings but they're not inherently sweet it's basically things that you would use in sweet applications to give it a little bit more flavor so these are what I consider to be my four and I know there are five things here but I'll explain why my four basic seasonings for sweet things and you're going to find some conglomerate of this in apple pies, in pumpkin pies, um, crumbles that you do, different things like that, but traditionally they're warmer fall spices. So we'll start off with the most commonly known one, which is of course cinnamon. And arguably this is maybe one of the most popular seasonings in general. So this is what the cinnamon looks like when you buy it in its whole form. There are several different types of cinnamon. We're not really going to get into that today. Um, you might see a Saigon cinnamon, a cassisis, if I said that properly. I probably didn't because I never seem to say things properly on here. Um, and then a Ceylon cinnamon. The Ceylon cinnamon is what is generally considered to be a little bit more of a gourmet cinnamon, but any variety you choose is still going to have that cinnamon flavor. It's just if you really want to fine tune things, you might be interested in going into other types of cinnamon to look into that. Then this one, which is my personal favorite, which is nutmeg. So this is what nutmeg looks like in its whole form. I brought two little nutmeg pods out for you. This one's whole, and this one I have grated off a little bit of it, so that's what its little insides look like. Now, you do have to be careful with nutmeg. You don't want to put too much of it into, um, into your dishes because it can have a bad effect if you use too much of it. And of course, like anything, it can be overpowering. But I like that flavor that it gives to things, and it's actually a good background flavor for some of your more savory dishes, too. Like I um, like to sprinkle some of it in my um, Alfredo sauce. Then this one, which is ground ginger, and I did not think far enough ahead to get actual whole ginger so that you could see it, but pretty much everyone's familiar with what the whole ginger looks like. This one is another great one. It's really good in summer things to like deepen and enliven blueberry dishes. Um, but it's also a great background note to like your pumpkin pies. It really gives you that uh, little pop basically and it's really good to use and it's really good for you. The cinnamon is really good for you too so there's no reason you should not be using these things unless you inherently don't like them. Speaking of things we don't <laughs> inherently like, the reason I have two spices here this is allspice and this is clove. Now, they both have very similar taste profiles. And if I could let you smell them, I definitely would. They're very similar and even their smells are similar but slightly different. Clove is much stronger than the allspice is. You can use these pretty much interchangeably in your recipes. If you really love clove, you can switch out anything that calls for allspice with clove. If you really prefer allspice, you can switch out anything that calls for clove with allspice. Now my personal preference is that I do prefer the allspice because the flavor profile that these two spices share is very um, strong. It's a very strong and can be overpowering flavor. So this is the clove pods. These little ones that have the little pod on top and then they come down like that. And then this is the allspice berry. Just the little round. So I prefer to use the allspice in most of my applications and regardless of which one you use, you want to use it sparingly because it is strong, but they are a 
almost essential background note for your pumpkin pies. Not necessarily like an apple pie, but the pumpkin pie, yes. So these are what I consider to be my essential baking spices. If these were the only spices that I had to bake with, I'd be good. So I also thought that I would show you how to use these to make a pumpkin spice mix. So you can definitely make your own pumpkin spice mix. You don't have to buy the little jar that's labeled pumpkin spice mix. You can make your own. So we are going to do that today with our four spices, which is nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, and allspice. So this one that's not labeled here, that's my cinnamon. And I'm going to do what I showed you on the... Um, what was that? The taco, the taco seasoning. I thought I showed you how to make Cajun. I did show you how to make Cajun spices. We're gonna do what I showed you to do on that one and mix everything in a tiny mason jar. Cause it's easy and it's fun and it automatically gives us a way to store it. Whoops. <laughs> okay. So one tablespoon of cinnamon. And then ginger is going to be the one that I'm using the next biggest amount of. And for my ginger, I'm going to use one and a half teaspoons. Now you can change your ratios on this however you want. If you want it to have even more cinnamon, if you don't like ginger and you want to tone back the ginger, if you want to increase the allspice, it's all about what tastes good to you. So do what tastes good to you. Now we're gonna do a teaspoon of nutmeg, a slight teaspoon. And then finally, our allspice, we're going to do half a teaspoon of. So it's one tablespoon of cinnamon, one and a half teaspoons of ginger, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and half a teaspoon of either allspice or clove. And then you just cap that up, give it a little shake. And there you have your pumpkin spice seasoning. <laughs> I was trying to give it to the cameraman, but apparently it's going to the camera. Um, so this is a really easy way to make pumpkin spice seasoning. You don't have to use this only for pumpkin pie. I know everybody's not crazy into pumpkin pie, but you can use it in pumpkin spice lattes or whatever you want to use it for because it's a really great base seasoning mix to have. So I hope that you try it if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about anything, as always, please feel free to comment. Bye-bye.